Welcome everybody to Radicalized Truth Survives episode 108. Today we are going to be talking about the attack on public education. We are bringing in Professor Josh Cowan who wrote a very important book called The Privateers and we're going to show you how billionaires have been using their money to actually hurt the education of our children. Have a listen. Thank you so much for being with us here, Professor Cowan. We are so excited to talk about this project with you. I am always concerned in an information war that um, so many things get lost behind words, lost behind words like gerrymandering and, and vouchers has been a word that I think people don't understand. And your book, The Privateers, goes a long way to explaining how important it is that we do understand it. But can you just brief our viewership on a bit about your background and then how you took on this very important project? Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, so uh, I am by day a, a professor uh, at Michigan State University. I teach in, in education policy, which means uh, most of my professional life has been evaluating publicly funded programs in education. And I got my start doing that uh, on school choice and school voucher programs specifically. And what I write about in the book is that vouchers, which are any number of tax funded, publicly funded private school tuition programs, vouchers have been around for about 30 years, at least uh, in, in current modern day form. And there was this puzzle uh, in the early 90s when they first started uh, into the, say 20 years ago or so, vouchers had you know, something like mixed to maybe even a few positive results for low income kids in the small uh, programs that, that tried them. But over the last decade, as vouchers have expanded into the statewide taxpayer funded private school systems that we are seeing today, vouchers have caused some of the worst academic declines in the history of education research, never seen anything quite that bad. You have to go to something like what Hurricane Katrina did to test, to test scores for kids who survived that or what COVID-19 did more recently to academic outcomes. And so the puzzle that the book asks is why, if this is the case and has been well understood in the research community that I'm a part of, why did this happen? And the answer is, uh, in the book's title, the answer is that vouchers have really never been about helping kids and families. It's part of this larger uh, right-wing billionaire effort to um, to privatize education in general, and particularly uh, more recently to lean heavily into Christian nationalism as the motivating force. So to sum that up, over the last decade, as vouchers have had some of the worst academic results we've ever seen in the history of education research, uh, billionaires on the right have turned increasingly to culture wars and to Christian nationalism to make the case for voucher systems. And that's why we're seeing so many of them spread today. Thank you so much for that intro. And the way I look at it is somebody had to write this book. And I think it's very important that you're in Michigan. And can yeah. you tell us why being in Michigan is so important to this subject matter? Sure. Well, 60 miles or so away from me is uh, a billionaire heiress named Betsy DeVos. Uh, from the famous uh, DeVos family uh, from West Michigan. And as the book lays out, and as I think folks um, generally who are aware of education in general in, in the United States know, the DeVos family has been heavily involved in trying to privatize education for, for, for decades, uh, vouchers being the, the, the sort of centerpiece of that goal, but there are others as well. Betsy DeVos has lamented in, in public statements uh, what she calls the decline of churches as community centers and being replaced by public schools as community centers. And so it's important to see this voucher push, uh, at least as far as the DeVos folks are concerned, as something of an effort to uh, remake uh, American education in, into a more um, uh, religious and specifically uh, right-wing version of Christianity uh, taught and administered through the private school system. That's sort of a, a goal that we all agree that they share, uh, and then the only question is whether or not one agrees that that's a good thing. Wow. Okay. I've got a bunch of questions, but Hi-Fi, you jump in. Uh, so one of the questions I have for you is, you know, 
we talk about on this program, and we've in, interviewed Nancy McLean, uh, mm -hmm. we talk about the Council for National Policy yeah. and the Heritage Foundation. Yeah. And those are directly connected to billionaire donors. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about how you tracked the donors to the organizations, to the people, you know, pushing the vouchers and, and the, the fake studies around voucher uh, benefits? Well, it's important. I mean, so I'm glad you mentioned Professor McLean. So her work, uh, work by the journalist Ann Nelson, work by the journalist Jane Mayer, uh, are all work by the journalist Catherine Stewart, are all um, writers whose work I draw on and kind of pull together in the privateers. One way to think of my book is kind of the education specific, the voucher specific story for the larger story that those great writers are, are trying to tell. Um, but one decision that I made early on in the book, in the research for the book, was to rely in exclusively, uh, with, with just a couple of exceptions, rely on um, publicly available documents. So, so uh, IRS 990s, uh, campaign finance reports, a lot of great press. And then as a professor, you know, I talk about my own sort of role in working as a young scholar 20 years ago on some of these pro-voucher studies and uh, and how those things get assembled and, and by whom. And so Heritage is a big player in that space. Uh, the American Federation for Children, which is Betsy DeVos's think tank, is a big player in that space. And all of these groups are connected through, you, you mentioned the Council for National Policy. This is a right-wing kind of network of politics and policy. To quote uh, uh, Dick DeVos, Betsy DeVos's uh, partner, uh, you're connecting the donors with the doers through the group, uh, uh, the national, the Council yeah. for National Policy, and so this is this is how to how it gets done. And what I what I point out in the book is that not every, you know, not every voucher study out there done by all of these people is necessarily wrong or is necessarily. Uh, you know, they're not necessarily cooking data, but what's happening is a, a case is assembled over time, very much the way that a, a political campaign war rooms uh, against an opponent candidate. And so what, what's happening here is you can't blatantly put false statements on t television. The FEC has, has something to say about that. But what happens is, is very much like negative campaigning against public schools, uh, against uh, critics of voucher programs. And that's how the case gets assembled by these folks over time. Wow, thank you so much for that and a yeah. great question. We um, have done a lot of reporting on, I've done personally a lot of reporting on Project 2025. Yeah. And I would love for you to help clue our audience into how this kind of comes out of the same soup. Yeah, uh, I was just finishing the manuscript for the privateers when, private, when Project 2025 was rolled out by the Heritage Foundation. Heritage makes a, a, a number of appearances in my book. Uh, so Project 2025 is this right-wing blueprint for a new Trump presidency. And vouchers, school vouchers, uh, are two of the first three paragraphs in the education chapter uh, for Project 2025. The whole centerpiece, all of the other things they have to say about education uh, destroying the Depart the U.S. Department of Ed, which oversees uh, anti-discrimination programs, for example, uh, uh, fighting back what they call a gender ideology or woke schools, critical race theory, all of these things. All of that sort of centers around the idea that we're going to take public dollars and move it into private schools. But to do that, you have to, in the words of, of, sort of the right wing influencer, Christopher Rufo, you have to create uh, uh, undermine co public confidence in public schools. And that's what the idea here is both behind Project 2025 uh, in its education form, and then also the voucher push in general. So very, very important to, to know that, that school vouchers are the centerpiece of Project 2025's education agenda. Thank you so much for that. We feel that um, what we are seeing in, for example, Florida is so cynical that Moms Thanks. for Liberty was a very cynical uh, creation. And when you talk about Christopher Rufo, you can draw a direct line there. And what we found out in our reporting is that so much of these culture war attacks are actually cover for people who are profiting off the privatization, private citation of education, as well as the voucher program. And can you talk a bit about that? Because I look at a place like Florida as a perfect example of what David Pepper calls these laboratories of autocracy. And yeah. when you follow the money, who do you find the same people directing these culture wars? Right. So 
Um, the so it's a good point. In the book, I don't spend a lot of time talking about the profit piece of this for the simple reason that the two biggest players in right-wing billionaire politics are Betsy DeVos and Charles Koch, and neither of them need extra money. And uh, what, what they're doing is really ideological. On the Koch side, they're anti-government and want to roll back anything they call regulation. And on the DeVos side, they want to remake uh, America and, and public schools specifically in the, in the image of Christian nationalism. So that's the motive for those organizations. But it's true that in places like Florida, I would also say places like Arizona, places like Ohio, and even to some extent in my own state where we don't have vouchers, but we have for-profit charter schools, you do see lower level on the make operators kind of coming in behind these bigger picture strategic players like the Cokes, like the, the DeVosses, and coming in, you know, you know um, almost like wartime profiteers to kind of after after the battle to come in and start to make some money off of this. And those are kind of, those are very risky businesses. The margins on uh, on education, edu it, it's, 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 it's expensive to educate children, and it's a difficult thing to do. Um, it's hard to run a school. And so I'm always very skeptical of claims, and you almost hear this exclusively from the right. Uh, listen, vouchers can educate kids more cheaply, or the micro schools in Florida can educate kids more cheaply. You know, that's private equity talking. That's uh, someone who's really concerned about their margins talking instead of the of education for, for kids. And so I do worry about those things. Um, but I would, again, think of those as kind of the... the the sort of lower level post struggle players that come in after the fact uh, at, at the sort of the big movers and shakers here at the billionaire level. Listen, Betsy DeVos is wealthier than any of us on this on this uh, interview are, are ever going to be. Uh, for her, it's, this is about ideology. Wow. Thank you again so much. I'm so grateful that you took on this subject matter. And one of the very important pieces of data that you reveal is that Despite all the data showing that this does not improve education, 21 states have passed vouchers since 2021, nearly all of them red states. Uh, here you mentioned Texas, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, taking it up in the legislative uh, sessions this right year. Now. So I guess kind of how do we sort of sound the alarm to the people in these states that this is a lot of smoke and mirrors and it is nothing good for their children? Well, the, the, it's, it's a great question. Um, I, I think a lot of folks know. And what's important to point out about this too, by the way, is that it's not just uh, progressives or uh, critics of right-wing politics or Democrats or whoever. Uh, it's been, the reason Texas and Tennessee uh, have held the line on universal vouchers, which go to everyone regardless of income, uh, the reason that those states have not passed those programs or that it took Iowa or Arkansas uh, up until last year to bring these programs to their state, to bring vouchers to their state, you know, those are all red states. Uh, but the reason that it took so long is that Republicans, in particular rural Republicans, have long opposed vouchers too, for the simple reason that there aren't any private schools in most rural communities to speak of. And these folks rely on their public schools to, you know, we're talking about Texas, we're talking about Friday night lights, talking about football, talking about uh, districts and communities, those very communities that, uh, that Betsy DeVos doesn't want public schools to be the center of. And so the playbook for these folks in the last couple of years has been not so much trying to convert liberal critics of vouchers or progressive critics of vouchers, but has it instead been to use their vast dollars to target Republican legislators in Republican primaries in those states and pick them off one by one to uh, put in uh, sort of MAGA Republicans that are much more favorable to these types of voucher schemes. And that's what's been happening in each of those states. We'll see what happens in Texas. We'll see what happens in Tennessee. Uh, votes failed in those two states this spring. Uh, but it's an ongoing thing. And we'll just, you know, uh, there's a lot of money being spent. Um, if I could sort of one piece of data I'll add to that is CNN reported in, in late May uh, these staggering numbers that Betsy DeVos's own organization called the American Federation for Children, sort of a, uh, 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 an odd name, but they, uh, they have spent $250 million, according to their own accounting, 
on bringing vouchers to the states since 2013, $250 million. And for that, they've gotten back $25 billion. Again, this is all their own numbers. This is CNN got a hold of an investor deck. So $25 billion in exchange um, for, for that 250 in spending. That means that for every $1 DeVos organizations have put into privatizing education, they've gotten $100 back uh, in public spending for private education. That's wow. the money we're talking about here. And oh we'll, 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 that's going to target Republican legislators. My co-host here, High Fidelity, is in Ohio. We have a very good friend who I mentioned earlier, David Pepper, who mm -hmm. reports on the critical uh, issues facing public education in Ohio every week. He's screaming it from the mountaintop as loud as he can. And bottom line is that Ohio is a great example of a state that went from having one of the best public school systems right. to now really struggling. And Hi-Fi, do you want to add anything to that uh, so we can address so, Ohio specifically? So the gerrymandered Ohio legislature, which should be far more proportionate than what it is right now, yeah. uh, multiple scandals in, in, around our educational system. Uh, our educational system was ruled by the Ohio Supreme Court to be unconstitutional. Uh, we had multiple scandals involving, involving charter schools, uh, specifically one called White Hat and another called ECOT, in which our lieutenant governor uh, basically switched a few million dollars from public education, taxpayer-funded schools to these charter schools, yeah. and he personally benefited from this. Uh, do you see this corruption uh, in other states where the voucher programs are going on, like Ohio? Or well, there's no? certainly a long list and, and other organizations, the Network for Public Education, for example, uh, have tracked the charter school scandals that do, do happen from time to time in other states as a consequence of, uh, you know, the lack of oversight in some cases. Um, we haven't seen anything like that yet on the voucher side, simply because we're still, this is still fairly new at, at scale. Um, what the kinds of scandals that I would point to and that I talk about in the book are more uh, political and, and less financial. So uh, in Ohio, or sort of next door to Ohio, for example, we've seen millions of dollars being spent on private schools that explicitly anti-LGBTQ. Uh, Florida private schools taking millions of dollars in taxpayer funding, firing gay teachers, for example, uh, things like that of that nature. Um, I do worry as we start to get these programs and see the whole the one of the dis, dis, distinguishing features about today's voucher systems as opposed to the ones that that came up in the 90s and those that i worked on 20 years ago is that there's just no oversight whatsoever uh in today's version and so all of the kinds of things that we worry about and listen uh right-wing voucher advocates in arizona right now are fighting the governor's attempt to require background checks for voucher teach teachers in those voucher funded private schools i mean i don't know how you're against background checks uh for for, for adults teaching kiddos in private schools but but the voucher lobby is because they say it's all government regulation so that that condition is is ripe for uh, for for scandal, certainly. Uh, um, one thing I want to mention about Ohio is just to sort of uh, affirm what you said about Ohio's rich tradition of public education. Ohio is the site of the first Supreme Court case to bless vouchers 22 years ago. Uh, and, and it's been kind of downhill since then as far as uh, the state's spending on vouchers and uh, and their commitment to public education. But up until very recently, uh, Ohio spending has has maintained a, a pretty decent rate of commitment to public education. But with their new universal system, uh, almost almost nine out of every 10 new users are wealthier, are white. Uh, they're not the kinds of kids that, that the voucher lobby originally tried to sell these programs to. And the last one thing I'll say that, that does set Ohio aside, um, they're the only state that I'm aware of so far that has also started to talk about sending money directly to private schools to increase their building capacity and create new private schools on church grounds, specifically to create seats for the voucher dollars to be spent at. Because right now in Ohio, there's not enough private schools to go around, certainly not of any quality. And so they've, the voucher lobby has recognized this as a real problem. And so now they're starting to talk about, well, how do we send dollars, not just to the kids as a coupon, as a voucher coupon to spend at those private schools, but how do we send 
send taxpayer dollars to those private schools to build new buildings and pull more kids out of the public sector as well. And that's something that, that is happening in Ohio that I have not seen yet in other states. Wow. Wow. I, um, I'm so moved by this interview and by your incredible depth of knowledge and your epilogue is quite quite beautiful and very profound. Uh, and as you note, there is a vast right-wing conspiracy sure. when it comes to this. And and how you, you end with this beautiful line about this being a moral statement. And can you give our readers a little bit more on that? Because I think, I think that when we discuss topics like this, it's not always easy for yeah. people to wrap their head around the fact that we are dealing with moral issues. We are dealing with moral issues, and I, for one, refuse to cede uh, moral issues entirely to the right wing. Sort of the morality that I would embrace and that I talk about in the book is one that that is that tries at least to be more inclusive. Public schools themselves have their own history of of coming up short from time to time of, of excluding kids that needed more support. And we need to work on those things. And I, I certainly uh, want to call to do that, but it's very difficult to do that when you're stra when you're taking money from those institutions and from the families and the kids in those public schools and giving them to, to right wing uh, churches and things. And so my view, you know, what happens sometimes when you get into these conversations is you, you try not to uh, end on a on a negative note. What's what is there any hope for the future? And so what I say at the end of the book is, listen, we've got very sound as much as the research community has identified vouchers as as having catastrophically bad ne uh, negative impacts on kids' outcomes. We also know from the same research community that investing in public schools works not just for test scores, but for uh, raising wages of those kids when they become adults, reducing the chance that they become uh, incarcerated. We know that child care programs, that investments in early pre-K programs actually help kids. And so I talk about putting all of those things together and, and you know, you get what you pay for. And, uh, and, and so what I end the book with is just this call for, listen, if we're going to talk in those terms, uh, we need to talk about the fact that at the end of the day, a more inclusive vision of American society, one that works for everyone, one that acknowledges past failures and past sins, uh, but 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 is commit committed to working on on those shortcomings today, and then and then demands that everybody has a space in the future to live out the American dream. Those are the things that I want um, for my kids and my family, and those are the things that I end the book with. That's brilliant. I have one more question, but Hi-Fi, do you have a final question? My final question is, is very simple. It's simply a yes or no answer. Um, one of the things we talk about on this show and, and one of the things I try to get our audience to understand is currently we are experiencing a class war in which billionaires uh, and their lackeys are doing everything they can to dismantle the administrative state that created the middle class, uh, helps out the lower class, and tries to bring things into a more equal and just society. Uh, would you agree that the school vouchers are part of the class warfare uh, that we are experiencing today? Yes or no? Yes. Uh, most users of voucher programs today uh, were already in private school. About 70% of voucher users, today's version of voucher systems, were already in private school. What this is at the end of the day is a uh, diversion of dollars to those families first and foremost. Thank you so much for that. My question is very simple as well. Uh, we got a lot of our friends and viewers canvassing right now. They are in a states, uh, states like Ohio and Florida and yeah. uh, some of this, you know, Texas. There's many pro-democracy activists who are door knocking. Um, is there a way that you can give them a tool, a phrase to use that almost removes the word voucher? Again, people's minds get blocked behind certain things where they can explain the stakes for their children and the future of their children's education and well-being. Well, listen. Investing in public schools works. It's not only the uh, it's not only the scientifically correct thing to do. It's the right thing to do. Uh, that's number one. The data back that up. Uh, number two, it's important to remember for all of these schemes that come out of the right wing, it's not school choice. It's the school's choice. And what I mean by that is all of these programs are about picking the kids that that sort of fit into the vision for America that that the American religious right wants and demands and leaves everybody else out in the cold. 
And so what I would just sort of say to folks is just when you hear something that sounds too good to be true and it's coming out of the right, it probably is. And remember that 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 all of these things are designed to give uh, Christian nationalists the the choice of what uh, your state, your town, your country looks like. Uh, and if they're selling you a vision that that seems like it's pretty, pretty great, uh, impor it's important to to read the fine print and to understand that really all of this comes down to um, whether or not uh, you, your family, your kids fit into this this right wing vision for America. And if so, um, you know, best of luck. But uh, but increasingly, this is not that country. And, and uh, you know, this is something I think we all have to recognize to to embrace the middle class that's that's exists as it is today in this country. Oh, thank you so much for that. There has been such a concerted attack on education, and I am so glad that you are among our defenses and that you're fighting back. The book is Privateers. You can pre-order it now. It is available September 10th, and we thank you, Professor Cowan, for your incredible work and for joining us today. I appreciate you having me.